Welcome to the UT Health East Texas Virtual Education Series. Today's presentation topic is arthritis featuring Dr. Leanne Dada, board certified rheumatologist at UT Health East Texas Physicians at North Campus Tyler. Today, I'm going to be talking about arthritis. So, in this talk, we're going to be discussing what arthritis is, different types of arthritis, symptoms, how we as rheumatologists diagnose arthritis, and different treatments. So what is arthritis? Arthritis is pain and damage in a joint. It can affect any joint, and it's important to note that there are hundreds of different types of arthritis. Signs and symptoms. So common signs and symptoms include pain in the joint, stiffness of the joint, swelling, and loss of motion. Symptoms can come and go. They can be mild, moderate, or severe. And severe arthritis can lead to chronic pain and make it difficult for individuals to do their daily activities. So there, again, are hundreds of types of arthritis, but some of the more common ones include degenerative arthritis, for example, osteoarthritis, inflammatory or autoimmune arthritis, crystal arthritis, and infection arthritis. So we're going to start with degenerative arthritis. This is also known as wear and tear. Um, this is actually the most common type of arthritis, and causes include age, injury, overuse, obesity, weak muscles, and genetics. And it's important to note that women are more likely to develop this type of arthritis over men. So here we see a picture of what degenerative arthritis is, and you can see that you have loss of the cartilage, space narrowing between the two bones, and micro traumas amongst the two bones as a result of the impact. So what are the symptoms of osteoarthritis? Well, patients can experience pain or ache during activity, we can have stiffness first thing in the morning that lasts for minutes, and stiffness that happens after prolonged sitting. Clicking, and, uh, clicking with bending of the joint can also occur, and joint instability, or your, your joints giving out, can also be a result of degenerative arthritis. Commonly affected joints include the hips, the knees, fingers, and the feet. So degenerative arthritis can be diagnosed in multiple ways. Typically, we can get a good history from a patient and determine pretty quickly that this is likely degenerative arthritis. We can supplement this suspicion with physical exam findings, and then we can order x-rays and MRIs of the joint to see the extent of degenerative arthritis. Here we see a picture on the right of bone-on-bone -bone disease, which is um, a depiction of late-stage osteoarthritis. So we have different treatments we can do to help our patients with osteoarthritis. So physical therapy is a great first option to help strengthen the muscles. We have medications that target pain. We have medications that target pain and inflammation. We have topical medications as well. And we can perform joint injections, including steroid injections and visco supplementation into the joint to help with the pain. And a last resort measure when all, everything else fails is surgery. Now we're going to move on and talk about rheumatoid arthritis. So RA is an arthritis that not only causes pain, but causes significant inflammation in the joint. It is a problem when the immune system improperly attacks the lining of the joint, also known as the synovium. And it most commonly presents in the hands and feet. Um, it's important to remember that it is a systemic disease, so it doesn't only affect the joints, but it can also affect other body parts, like the eyes, the lungs, skin, blood cells, and the heart. Here you see a picture of a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, and you can see substantial swelling over the different joints. So what are some statistics of rheumatoid arthritis? Well, this is a problem in 1.5 million patients across the US. It is a problem where women are three times more likely to develop rheumatoid arthritis over men. 
And in women, rheumatoid arthritis commonly occurs between the ages of 30 to 60. In men, it's rare underneath the age of 45, however it can occur. So researchers think that uh, patients get RA because the individual has certain genes that predisposes them to getting rheumatoid arthritis, and um, that gene is triggered by something in the environment. Symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis include joint pain, tenderness, and swelling in multiple joints. The symptoms can be worse in the morning, and the swelling and pain can last for hours before it lets up. And it's a symmetrical disease, so it affects joints on both sides of the body. We can diagnose RA based off our patient's history, physical exam findings, which oftentimes show swelling, warmth, and tenderness. There are certain blood tests that can tell us about the inflammation in the body. And we can also look at certain autoantibodies that are associated with rheumatoid arthritis. Image findings are also very helpful. We can use x-rays, MRIs, and ultrasounds. Um, here we see the hallmark x-ray finding of rheumatoid arthritis, which is the erosion. This indicates that there's significant inflammation in the joint, that it's actually eroding the bone. So different treatments of our rheumatoid arthritis um, primarily involve taking care of the underlying problem. So we use medications that modulate or affect the immune system to stop it from damaging your joints and other organs. Our goals with this treatment are to not only stop the inflammation, but to relieve symptoms, prevent joint damage, destruction, and disability, and reduce long-term complications of having rheumatoid arthritis. In rheumatology, we use a treat to target model, which means that we follow up with patients really rapidly and, and uh, really aggressively to make sure that their disease is in remission. And we try to keep our patients under tight control. Now we're gonna talk about psoriatic arthritis. This is also an autoimmune disease that causes arthritis in the joints and causes a skin condition called psoriasis. It can affect large and small joints, but it rarely affects the spine. Um, it's important to note that psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis run in families. And psoriatic arthritis can affect patients very differently. So here on the right is an example of uh, skin psoriasis. So in psoriatic arthritis, we talked about the psoriasis, it typically presents as a very itchy, painful red patch um, with or without silvery white buildup. It's most commonly found in the knees, the elbows, and the scalp, but technically the rash can occur anywhere. You can also have some nail findings consistent with psoriasis, including cracking, pitting, white spots, and lifting of the nail from the nail bed. And this picture at the top right corner actually shows um, pitting and ridges. And lastly, patients can have enthesitis, which means inflammation at the ligaments and tendons that attach to the bones. So it's not purely a disease of, of the joints, but it can also affect the ligaments and tendons. And the most common area this occurs is the back of the heel, also known as the Achilles tendon, and the bottom of the foot. We can diagnose our patients with psoriatic arthritis, again, based on history and exam, but we can also obtain markers of inflammation and genetic testing. X-rays and MRI can be helpful. And sometimes if we're not sure about the rash, we can also ask our dermatology colleagues to perform a skin biopsy to help confirm the diagnosis. Right. Next, we're gonna talk about lupus. Lupus is a systemic autoimmune condition with symptoms that come and go. These symptoms can be mild, moderate, or severe, and African-American females are the highest at risk. So, Nine out of 10 patients with lupus are female. Um, the disease commonly occurs between ages 15 and 45, and about 15 to 20% of lupus cases develop before the age of 18, so we do see lupus in our pediatric population. And again, African American females are three times more likely to develop lupus than Caucasian 
females. Um, so what are some of the common symptoms of lupus? Well, joint pain is one. Patients can also have a butterfly-shaped rash on their cheeks and nose. Patients can have painless mouth sores. They can have sensitivity towards light, so not only sunlight, but artificial light. And they can have chest pain or trouble breathing. Um, other more rare symptoms of lupus include inflammation in the kidneys or lungs, Renaud's phenomena, which is a discoloration of the fingertips when patients are exposed to the cold. Um, you can see that here on the right in the picture where you see the patient's fingertips are turning white. And this again happens with cold exposure. Um, fingertips will turn white, blue, then red. And it's also a very painful condition. Um, patients can also experience hair loss and blood problems like anemia or abnormalities in their white count. We diagnose lupus based off of history, physical exam, and lab testing. So we have to look at different parameters of patients' organs to make sure that there is no what we call immune-mediated damage. So we look at complete blood counts, we look at blood chemistry, we look at urine tests. We also look at something called the anti-nuclear antibody, which is common in patients with lupus. Um, we also look at other more specific autoantibodies, complement proteins, and again, markers of inflammation. And um, if there is an organ that's involved, oftentimes we will have to obtain a biopsy to see the extent of involvement. Um, so again, our treatments for lupus target the immune system. So we're targeting systemic inflammation and our goal is to prevent organ destruction. And we also have to talk about different lifestyle changes in order to prevent flares from occurring as well as keeping patients under control. Lastly, we're gonna talk about gout. Um, this is a sudden and severe joint pain that typically starts in the big toe. Men are more likely to develop gout than females. It affects men after the age of 40 and females after menopause. And it can commonly be confused with another type of crystal arthritis called pseudogout. Um, so in terms of diagnosing gout, we can talk to patients and get a good history. We do a thorough physical exam. We can use x-ray or what we call dual energy CT scan to um, look for evidence of gout. Um, this here in the middle is an example of a dual energy CT scan and the green in the picture depicts uric acid crystals which are the problem in gout. We can also get a uric acid level in the blood to help us determine how severe the gout is and if it's well controlled or not. And the gold standard for at least diagnosing gout is to actually take fluid from the joint and look for the crystals under the microscope. So gout treatment, well, it depends on if we're treating gout acutely or chronically. So if you have a flare, our treatment and management is different than if we're talking about maintaining your uric acid for prevention. Um, we also talk about certain diets which can cause flares. So uh, it's important that our patients with gout avoid foods with high purines like meats. Um, they avoid sugary foods and certain types of alcohol. So what should you do if you have joint pain? Well, it's really important that you make an appointment with your physician to help you figure out what type of arthritis you have and what the available options may be. And I do wanna highlight that in some types of arthritis, early diagnosis is very important to prevent destruction and disability of your joints. All right, so here are a few questions that we've received. The first one is, can you get arthritis at any age? That's a really good question. Actually, you can. Uh, we do have a subset of patients who develop arthritis um, in the pediatric population. This is also known as juvenile idiopathic arthritis. And so pediatrics can also uh, get arthritis. It's not just a, a disease of the elderly. Um, the second question is, can you have more than one type of arthritis? 
And the answer to that is yes. And in fact, most patients do have more than one type of arthritis. So a lot of our patients with rheumatoid arthritis will also develop a secondary osteoarthritis. And a lot of our patients with psoriatic arthritis will also develop gout. So most patients actually do have more than one kind of arthritis. And that's why it's important that if you do develop different symptoms that you do reach out to your physician to discuss. And our last question is, is carpal tunnel syndrome a type of arthritis? Um, carpal tunnel syndrome itself is not a type of arthritis. It's more so impingement on a nerve that oftentimes causes numbness and tingling in the fingers. But certain kinds of arthritis within the wrist or other parts of your joints can sometimes cause patients to have carpal tunnel syndrome. So sometimes it can exist with patients with arthritis. We hope you enjoyed the presentation today. For more information about scheduling an appointment with Dr. Dada, call 903-877-7911 or visit UTHealthyTexasDoctors.com. Our next virtual seminar will be announced soon. Follow us on Facebook to stay up to date on upcoming events and seminars. Thank you for joining.